Hey guys, Mr. Klein here. Chapter 8, Lesson 2, Lane Forms at Plate Boundaries. Uh, in many ways, actually, this is a review of a previous lesson on the theory of plate tectonics. So if you go and look back for Chapter 7, uh, Lesson 2, the Theory of Plate Tectonics, uh, you can go ahead and review that lesson because it's a lot of the same things we're talking about, but we're going to be specifically talking about the landforms that form. So let's get started. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer three questions. One, what features form when two plates converge? Two, what features form when two plates diverge? And three, what features form when two plates slide past each other? So let's go ahead and get started. Now if you remember the theory of plate tectonics, you know that huge chunks of the Earth's crust slide around and they collide with each other. Now these huge chunks have so much force, they can form tall mountains and deep valleys. And if you remember from your previous lesson on the forces that shape Earth, we talked about strain, isostasy, vertical motion, horizontal motion. These form at very, on uh, very large scales in the forms of tension, compression, and shear, and each of these produce a different type of landform. Okay, and all of these form pl at plate boundaries. Okay, between the tectonic plates, there's 14 major ones. We live on the North American plate. Okay, and if you remember from that lesson on the theory of plate tectonics, I created a handout of this slide that showed the interactions: where divergent, where they spread apart; transform, where they slide across each other; and convergent, where they come together. And whether it's an ocean-to-continent collision or a continent-to-continent collision, we have different things. So we're going to be talking about these. In fact, let's first let's start talking about the two at the bottom, and we'll start talking about continent-to-continent, -continent and then go to ocean-to-continent. Now, the largest landforms on Earth are produced by compression at convergent plate boundaries. Convergent come together. Compression is squeezed together. So you see the you see the connection between the two. Now, if two continental plates collide, tall mountains like the Himalaya mountains can form. And these resulting mountain ranges form in stages slowly over millions of years. Now, although these plates are actually moving along the horizontal plane, or the x-axis, if you think about it, uh, the collision will cause the crust to move vertically, okay, along the y-axis as well, and that's why you get these mountains. And usually the general rule of thumb is the higher the mountain, the more likely it's caused by a uh, convergent plate boundary, and also the higher the mountain, the more recent the collision is. Let's go ahead and let's hop on Google Earth and let's get looking at that, okay? And we'll get to this spot later, but let's go look at Mount Everest, okay? Mount Everest is on the Himalaya mountain range. Okay, it's about 8,850 meters above sea level. Okay, and this is what sunrise looks like on Mount Everest. If the picture will load, it might not. Okay, well, it looks really cool. If you hop on Google Earth, you can find it. Okay, so Mount Everest is a part of a mountain chain. And that is the Himalaya mountains. And the Himalaya mountains are forming at the collision of two plates. One is the Indian plate, which is right here in the south. The uh, Eurasian plate is up here in the north. And what's happening is the Indian plate is pushing into the Eurasian plate about 48 millimeters per year, okay, or 4.8 centimeters per year, okay, or about an inch per year. Okay, inch, inch and a half. And so it's pushing into it at such high speed that the actual crust is actually being pushed up. So if we go back and we look at Mount Everest, okay, the rocks on this side are part of the Eurasian plate, the rocks on this side are part of the Indian plate and they're being pushed together. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's head back to school and let's continue the lesson. Now, what happens when two plates collide if one's an oceanic plate and one's a continental plate? Well, if you remember, oceanic plates are more dense, okay? They have a lot of water, the ocean pushing down on them, so there's more atoms per square centimeter than there are in continental plates, and they're also made of heavier elements. Well, what'll happen is the more dense uh, crust will push under through a process. You remember it's called subduction, sub meaning under, okay? And what happens is two things. One, a deep trench forms where the two plates meet, and if you remember, ocean trenches are deep underwater troughs created by one plate subducting underneath the other one. Okay, on the other side of the trench, you'll have volcanic mountains form where plates converge and one plate subducts under the other. Okay, this oceanic crust will melt forming magma, and it'll push itself through 
uh, the less dense uh, continental crusts to form volcanic mountains. These volcanic mountains in the ocean will essentially form islands about 100 kilometers per, uh, from the trench, and they'll form what we'll call a volcanic arc, the curved line of volcanic islands that form parallel to a plate boundary. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of these. Okay, so let's look at these. Now, first off, one close to us is the Puerto Rico Trench. Now, we might not have a lot of volcanoes in this area, but right, what we have right here is along this line, right here in the Puerto Rico Trench, is we have the, uh, we have the Caribbean plate moving underneath the North American plate, okay? And along the South American plate pushing underneath the Caribbean plate right here is you have these volcanic islands right here, including, yes, called Kikum Jenny. Now, if we go over to the Pacific, which is where the classical example of this, we'll see the Marianas Trench. And here's Challenger Deep, which is about 33,000 feet below sea level. So essentially, if we had like this gigantic planet-sized saw, we could actually cut Mount Everest out, drop it in the Marianas Trench, and the bottom of of Mount Everest at the at sea level would not reach the ocean surface. Okay, but it would create a pretty huge tidal wave. Okay, now what we see along here is the Pacific Plate subducting underneath the uh, Philippine Plate right here. And what we see along this trench line are all the volcanic islands. Where the Pacific Plate comes underneath the Asian Plate, okay, you see the same thing. These volcanic islands form. Volcanoes form along here in Japan. Okay, they form along these islands. Okay, and as you can see, there's a lot of movement, 78 millimeters per year. Okay, 7.8 centimeters. That's a couple inches per year. It's sliding in at, a, at really quick group. And as a result, you have a lot of volcanoes and stuff moving like that. So let's go ahead and let's head back to school. And we'll head out later, look at divergent, and we'll look at uh, transform plate boundaries in a minute. Now, and here's a, here's a look at what it looks like in action. Okay, the plate subducts into the asthenosphere. Okay the plate melts and becomes magma and it gets pushed up through these volcanic islands and occasionally you'll have uh, transfer uh, you'll occasionally have volcanic eruptions and earthquakes so let's look at divergent plate boundaries where they spread apart at mid-ocean ridges okay where plates move apart of course tension stresses they stretch the earth's crust just like silly putty or gum or sticky tack you pull it apart and it forms tension and sooner or later it pops well we don't really have that actual popping with the earth's plate Cross. Now, at divergent plate boundaries, oceanic plates move apart, and there are tension stresses that cause the crusts to spread apart. And these tension stresses cause oceanic crusts to spread apart. Hot rock from the mantle will rise. Remember, the mantle is the part of the Earth that's below the Earth's crust. Now, this hot mantle will rise and push the seafloor upward, making long, tall ridges making a long, tall ridge along the bottom of the ocean, and this creates what we call mid-ocean ridges. And the photo that you see at the bottom of each of these slides is actually where the Eurasian and North American plates are actually separating. So this actual gap, here's North America, here's Eurasia, and that's the gap between the two, and rock from the mantle comes up from there. Okay, so if we look at this at a divergent plate boundary, you'll see what we're talking about. Okay, as the ridges spread apart, okay, Hot rock from the mantle comes up and forms ridge lines. Okay, and so if we, when we look at the Earth's crust from here, what we'll do is we'll actually see this in action at a mid Atlantic ridge. Okay, so let's leave school, let's head over here. Okay, and we see this right here. Okay, here's this big gap. On one side is Eurasian plate, uh, North American plate, one side's the Eurasian plate. And as as the plates spread apart, what will happen is this is all rock from the mantle pushing up and being melted. Now, you might be wondering why are these horizontal gaps are there, and we're going to talk about that later. So let's look at what happens if there's a divergent plate uh, boundary where there is a continental fault. Okay. Now, when you have two continents spreading apart, they'll usually form continental rifts or enormous splits in the Earth's crust. Lots of continental rifts, we find evidence of them in Earth's past, but we don't have a lot of them really majorly that we see today. Tension stresses in the cold part of the upper crust will create faults. Remember, a fault is just where rocks break. And at these faults, large blocks of crust move downward, creating rift valleys between these ridges. 
So let's look at the Great Rift Valley, which is in Africa, which is the best example of a continental rift we see. Okay, and what we see right here is we see the African plate actually splitting in two right here, and it begins right right here. Okay, goes through, but as we follow it along, we see the plate form. Okay right here and actually we'll see volcanoes here okay and here's a lesser rift area right here where you have volcanoes right here now one of the one of the features of rift valleys is as you see these large lakes right here Malawi, Tanganyika, Lake Victoria to a lesser extent are formed by this and essentially anywhere where you see large wherever you see large uh, freshwater lakes is where you see rift valleys okay Lake Baikal which is right here uh, largest and deepest lake 20% of all freshwater on earth is in this lake okay this is in Russia and even in North America where if we stop spinning the earth around there we go okay the Great Lakes which are the largest lakes on earth are essentially are essentially the remnants of old rift valleys okay so at one time North America was being pulled apart and actually the plate boundary actually is considered by geologists to form the basis of the Mississippi River okay, where the Mississippi River forms is probably an old rift valley between the two where North America was coming together so and that rift valley pretty much stops down in southern Louisiana in this area right here okay that's where it disappears and actually the rift valley right here where if we go and we look this rift form ends up right here so that's rift valleys for you and that's uh, mid-ocean ridges and so those are divergent plate boundaries so let's look at the last one transform plate boundaries where they slide across each other okay shear stresses at transform boundaries produce faults where plates slide past each other horizontally now faults form where tectonic plates ho slide horizontally or what we call transform faults now segments of mid-ocean ridges are sometimes separated by those transform faults okay and if you saw where we were at earlier if we were go if we were to go out and we go look in this area right here these lines are actual transform fault boundaries okay and so what happens is they get put under stress and the rocks break and that forms plate boundaries so that's why we have all of these crisscross lines crisscross lines that dot the ocean uh, floor. Now, transform faults are they're perpendicular to these ocean ridges. So if you saw there that if you would see, if you will, the mid-ocean ridge by the divergent fault okay, is vertical, well, they would be perpendicular, so it would be horizontal to that area. Now, and they get longer as the plates move. Now, as older transform faults move farther away from the mid-ocean ridge, the new transform faults form, of course. That kind of makes sense. Now, a transform fault that can be seen from the Earth's surface is the San Andreas Fault. And many transform faults that are part of this fault system actually can't be seen from the surface of the Earth, but instead they're underground. And we'll look at that in a second. Now, a fault zone is an area of fractured pieces of crust that lie along a large fault. So let's look at this. This is what happens at transform faults. So you see the mountain, and eventually they move apart because they're sliding across each other. And as they slide across, that's where earthquakes form. And we'll talk about earthquakes in a week or so from that. So let's go ahead and let's look at the San Andreas Fault. Okay, it's over here in California. And if we zoom all the way in, we actually see, okay, right here, here's one part of the plate. On the other side, here's the other one. So if we zoom in, can actually see it really closer. So there's actually a road that runs across the fault, okay? And the United States Geologic Survey has a lot of instruments here to, for earthquakes, but here's the fault. They're in between this area right here where this photograph was taken, okay? Where this photograph, this is the actual line that divides the two plates. But most of the San Andreas Fault is actually, not, you can't see it on our surface, okay? Because it ends up going underneath. Okay, you see it, if we can follow it along some more. And then eventually, you'll see that small line. And it eventually vanishes, as we go further, into the Earth's crust from there. 
Okay, so that's the San Andreas Fault for you. And so let's wrap up this lesson, okay? It's a kind of a real big review of what we saw whenever we were talking about the theory of plate tectonics, but what features form when two plates converge, okay? Well, what forms is mountain ranges will form when two continental plates converge, but when an oceanic plate converges, a continental plate subduction occurs and oceanic trenches form volcanic islands, stuff like that, which we'll talk about volcanoes in an upcoming lesson. Now, what feature forms when two plates diverge or they pull apart from each other? Well, oceanic plates diverge, mid-ocean ridges form. And when two continental plates diverge, they, a rift valley forms, like the rift valley that you see in Africa. And one of the artifacts of that are large freshwater lakes. Now, what happens when they slide past each other? Well, transform faults form when two plates slide past each other. And a San Andreas fault is a great example of it, where you can actually walk and stand in between two tectonic plates. So that's your lesson for you. Uh, Landforms at plate boundaries. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If not, see you soon.